all right so today uh, our agenda is uh, to talk about methods again a very fundamental concept of a of a class or how a class is is structured so I, i'll just try to give a small briefing on how a class is structured basically okay so let me create a class i will say my first class or something and then there i will i'll just keep it simple so it's just a simple plain class nothing else so do we have nothing here uh, usually in java or any object oriented programming language you structure your code inside a class right so concept of class is to keep your uh, you know two things first is your uh, attributes or also called as characteristics or traits or properties then different names you can use for it and second is its behavior so all the class will be structured no matter what kind of class you going to make it will be structured between these two things one is your attributes or also called as properties second is your called as your behaviors now these behaviors are actually also called as methods okay behaviors are something which you actually call right so when you create a class you have to create an object out of that and when you have the object you have the option to trigger a behavior on that object okay so class in it, in itself is nothing it has no significance it has to be instantiated so when i say instantiated what i really mean is to create an object for it right so the moment you create an object the object has the properties as well as the methods which was present in its class okay so here what i am today going to focus is on the methods part so attributes are nothing but you see you know when you write something like this a is equal to 9 or something right this becomes an attribute so attribute can have a value or it maybe it will not have any value it doesn't it's not mandatory so you can say this is my attribute but it doesn't have any value or you can also say this is an attribute but it has a value right so in both the cases if you, it doesn't have a value then also then also it's fine you can create an object of it and assign a value to it later and if you want to say no no i want to set a value before i create a object out of it then also it's fine so in both ways it's fine the idea is quite pretty simple that whatever you're going to mention at the top will become an attribute or it and or or also called as its properties now what are behaviors something which is which the class or object is capable of doing right operations so again different names you can call it operations uh, methods behaviors right now there is a specific structure in which you need to define your method so we as i said we are going to talk more about methods perspective so i'm going to talk about how you're going to write a method so there are few things one is the access modifier depending on this or let me just first write it public void method 1 in argument now this is how a typical method looks like okay it has three parts rather four parts public void method and argument okay public means this is an access modifier we discussed it in previous classes it simply means that if you are marking it as public that means it is available outside that means if i am going to make an instance of it in different class and once i get a object of this class if i want to call this method i will be able to call it because it is marked as public if i mark mark it as private i will not be able to call it it, it will not be visible outside okay so this is called called call this access modifier just to give you a glimpse of it i can create another class i'll say it's a temp class it has public static void main and here let's say i have created this class called as my first class right if i want to create a instance of this class how i'm going to do that i'm going to simply say name of the class let's say my first class name of the object object is equal to new my first class so now i have created the object of this class now 
if I want to call a method on it, so I'll say object dot, I will not be able to see it. I don't see this, that method here. Why? Because it is marked as private. If you're marking it as private, you cannot call it in different classes. As simple as that. If you mark it as public, only then it becomes available here. So when I said object dot, now I should, I am seeing method one here. So now I can actually call it. Okay. But since it was not, it was marked as private. If you mark it, marking it as private, that means you don't want this behavior to be exposed outside this class. So if you want, let's say you are having another method here, public void uh, method two. And if you want to call, call this method, right? You want, you can simply call it like this method one. So what I'm trying to say is it doesn't matter within the class. If you're marking, marking any method as private, it doesn't matter within the class. You can call it irrespective of it is marked as private or public or protected or default, whatever it is. So within the class, there is no problem to access the private methods. But outside the class, if you're calling, creating an object outside, if you want to call the object or sorry, call the method outside, you will not be able to do it because see the error is coming because I have marked this as private. The moment I'll make it as public, the error will go away. Okay. This is called as access modifier. Now, second uh, dimension of, of a method is void. This is called as return type. So a method can return something right some consider it as a uh, any operation which when you do something so when you do something here so two things can happen either you will do you, have, you want to do something the task is done end of story or it could also happen that after doing something you want this method to return something return a value return an array return of return anything different values it's up to you right so if that is the case then you really have to mention what kind of value you want it to be returned or what what exact value you want your this method to return right but if you don't have anything to return you have to mandatorily write void here you cannot leave it blank so this void has to be written it's a mandatory uh, entity a man mandatory definition it has to be part of it if you don't want to return anything you will simply say with void or you can if you want you can also mention a statement called as return which actually returns nothing because return in this case is returning nothing, right? But in case, if you want to return something, for example, I want to return this variable. Let's say I want to return an integer value. So I'll say int, that means I want to return an integer and then I'll say a. So what really is happening here is, since I made changes here, that means I am expecting this method to return an integer. Since I am have written integer here, I really have to return something, right? And that return type should be an integer. So in this case, a is integer. That's why that's how I am able to do it. A simple example uh, for this should be, guys, give me a minute. Yeah, so sorry for the interruption. So uh, yeah, so this is how the structure of a method is. It has five things basically. So this is access modifier. This is the return type. This is the name of the method. Now I was talking about return type uh, before the interruption, right? So in teacher, it depends what you really wish to send. If you want to send any type of uh, variable, you can really send it. It can even be an object. If you want to send a type of uh, any the, the type of uh, the type is an object that also you can send from here right if it is an array you can say i am retaining returning an array if it's an array list it you can say i'm returning an array list right so you can return anything but whatever you wish to return you really need to mention it here so in this case this plain simple case so i'm just returning an integer now this is your method name this simply means uh, like a description of that behavior right so here it's a very simple name called as method one doesn't mean anything but in a in a real project it means it means something should mean something otherwise the people who is going to call it will not understand what really it is this method is capable of doing right so it should be a have it should have a meaningful name now last is 
uh, your arguments, right? So you can send some information inside the method so that uh, the method will get some input. It will process that input. It will do something and then it will return something. So method really looks like something like a, a black box, okay? For the user who is using that method, you're going to send some information to it using arguments. It will process it, do it, do something with it, and then it will return the value. Or it might not return the value. It depends. If you want it to return something, it will process it and it will return something. The typical examples we have been doing previously were was our addition subtraction programs, isn't it? So if I want to do those things again here, just quickly, just for demonstration purposes. So I simply say public int add i'll say two numbers integer one or integer a sorry integer b then i'll say int c i'm defining this variable inside and i'll say c is equal to a plus b i'll say return c right so this is a very simple example this access mod this is access modified that means it will return it will be available outside the script outside this class this this means it will return something add simply means i want to add something as i said the name has to be meaningful so i've given a name as add or you can also say addition doesn't matter then the argument so here i am passing two arguments right so in this case i was passing only single argument but if you want to and mention multiple arguments then you have the option to write this int a comma int b that means i am when i'm going to call this method I am going to pass in two integers. One a will one will be saved in a. Second integer will be saved in b. And then inside this, I am initializing or declaring another variable called as c. I can also do it at the top. I can also do this. So then I will not be a. I will not have any need to do this, right? C will be equal to a plus b. That means I am adding these two numbers which is being passed here, and then I am returning it as well. I will choose to do this only. So let me remove this. Okay. And to call this, if I want to call this inside, all I need to do is I'll just say addition. And I will just pass two numbers, four comma five. Okay. And this returns something as well. This should return, this is returning integer. So I have an option to save it in a variable called as result. So now this will be saved into, into the result part. Right. So whatever operation will, is going to happen, it will happen and it would then return something and will get saved here in the results part. So this is a very fundamental principle of how a method works. By the way, why you need it? First of all, you cannot have any code written anywhere other than in methods. That's the rule in Java. Right. If we talk about other programming languages called maybe VBScript or maybe JavaScript, you really don't have to write your code in a method. You can just write your code starting from the line one right i'm talking about vb script if you want to you know structure your code then you actually choose a method and write your code inside a method but that's not the option in java in java the fundamental unit is class and inside class you have two things one is your attribute second is your behaviors or methods and you have to write all the logic inside the methods only Right. So there is no other option other than using methods to write your code because everything has to go inside methods. Even even public static void main, which you use. Is also a method. It's a type of method. Public static void main is a type of method. OK, so nothing can go beyond method. You cannot write any code other than inside methods. If you try to write something here, it will start giving you errors. It will not take it. It will not tolerate it. OK, uh, now. So so far, and any any questions, guys? Anything? Uh, uh, yeah. I have I have a couple of queries. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, I just want to know uh, what is the difference between defining the variable and declaring the variable. Okay. So basically, there are two things. Okay. So when you say string a or string str, okay, this is declaring the variable. Okay, declaration and and defining is are almost the same thing. I'm not sure about what defining is, but declaration. So there are two things in a variable. One is declaring it. So I'm declaring it here. Okay, and second is initializing it. Means if I do this, 
then it becomes a initialization so when i assign a value to a variable it's called as initialization when i am not assigning it then it's called as declaration and same holds true with an object so let's say if i have an object let's say let's take an example of array list okay now array list is a is a class in java okay if i want to declare create an object of this i'll simply say i have two ways to do it either i'll say list is equal to new array list that's how you create the object right right this is called as creation of object it has two parts one is i am declaring or in some sense defining what kind of variable this is and then this part which is initialization so if i just do this much then this means i am just declaring the variable and same holds true with this so if i when i say string str this also a simple declaration i am just declaring the variable if i am doing this str is equal to then that means i am initializing it as well okay uh, something similar to happens with with the methods right so this is called as definition this is called as its implementation right this is this this is just a signature of a method if when i just say public void method 2 or public int method 1 int arg this is just a signature of the method that means i am just defining that what this method is capable of doing whether it what is the its visibility what is its return type what is the name what is the argument i'm just writing its signature but the moment i write here i will say i am implementing it and this concept is used where in your interfaces uh, example or abstract class example where you actually uh, you know implement the interface or extend the abstract class and then you implement that specific method which was defined in the interface as a signature only so in interfaces uh, only signatures are available right the the actual implementation the sub classes has to has to write so this is called as implementation this is just a signature and same holds true here this becomes when you just simply write you say this is a declaration and when you assign a value to it it becomes your initialization so that means you have initialized it yeah uh, so uh, correct me if i am not wrong uh, so definition is regarding only methods and declaration is regarding only variables yeah in some sense yes yeah and uh, another query is that uh, uh, is there any difference between de uh, declaring the variable within the method and uh, within the class yeah so there's a difference the difference is very it's a, it's a big difference actually see the thing is it's called a scope of the variable so when i say int a and string str okay that means i am able to use these variables anywhere in my class that means in inside any methods the so scope of a is everywhere okay everywhere in within within this class so when i say uh, let let me create another methods when i say public void tem so when i say a is equal to 9 this means the variable a which is present here right its value will be saved as 9 okay and if i if i say and if i create another method public void m1 and if i say sys out if i just want to print the value i want to print the value i will say print a so and i will first call temp and then temp1 so what will happen since temp has saved the value with of a as 9 i am able to retrieve it here right so to avoid the confusion let me just remove this these statements from here let me remove everything because this is this might be useful for you guys as a sys public static void main string args so if i am calling temp here first and then i am saying temp1 when i run this program okay so i have to mark it as static 
Now this is another another concept in Java wherein if you want to call a static method from uh, you know from or inside a method if there is a static method if you want to call another method the another method has to be static as well so it has since i am calling this stem from static it has to be static and same holds true with these variables okay so the simple concept here is i'll talk about static later so don't worry about static for now uh, all i'm trying to say is that if you have this variable called a stem and if you are saying a is equal to 9 here that means the variable which is at the top this is what you have modified straight away from this method but if you have another variable which is inside int c is equal to 9 int c is equal to 8 and if you want to access the variable c in another method let's say here print the value of c then this variable c is not accessible that means you declared it inside a method so the scope of this method is within this these brackets only it cannot be accessed outside these brackets so this is the basic difference if you're defining it at the top that means it's it's also called as instance variable If it, if it is an instance variable, then then you really cannot ex, you really can access it anywhere. You can access it in any of your method. If you make a very change in in specific method, the change will get reflected in different method as well. So if you're saying calling a temp here, value will be saved as nine. If you then call temp one, then the value of a will be printed as nine only because the it is pointing to the same variable here. But that's not the case with if you're creating a variable. inside if you saying int c is equal to 8 no so you cannot access 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 it anywhere else it the only place you can access it is within these brackets not outside uh sounds okay yes got it okay yeah the okay all right so now next thing is i have as, as i always do i have written down few examples to show you guys okay uh there is nothing more or different to explain you in these examples they are pretty much uh, the same uh it's just different ways of writing it right so see this is the first example this is public static void main and here uh what i'm trying to do is i'm passing so this is something similar to our calculator program which we were we were doing previously so this is a, this does a square so i'm passing a number here and that number is going to get multiplied and it will go going to get saved inside sq now here this int this is a internal variable so it will not have access outside that's for sure and in this case it is not returning anything it's void so since it is not returning anything i have an option to ignore this step so if i remove this return it's fine you don't have to mandatorily re write return here because it's a void and people really don't use it if you are it's a void it's a void nothing will be returned but if you want it to return something then i have to actually say here it is just printing it for example it is just printing it but what if i don't want to print it here i want to print the square here right so then i need this variable outside i need to get the result of this because it's not returning anything so what i have to do i will say okay i will return sq and sq is type integer so i will say int here so now this square will return something what it will return the square root once it will do the operation it will return it but to show it here i need to store it somewhere isn't it so i'll say int a or i'll say simply int result result okay so now this is how i can make the change so this method is returning something it's not saying anything previously it was printing the result but i don't want to print it here i just want that you do your job printing and all i will do myself right so that will happen here printing part of the result will happen here but not here so this way i have just returned it so when i return it so i have how i have called it simple one the name of the class and then the method name do i need to need to do this exact actually no right i could directly call the method square 2 okay now what if i don't want this to return right i i i'll say okay why i am returning it because i am using it in the same same method in present in this inside the same class so how about i will just create a instance variable so i'll say int result 
this is just a declaration so i've just declared it okay i have not initialized it now what i'll do i will say okay when i do the operation i will use the variable result because it has access in this method as well as this method so i really don't need to return it i can just make use of this instance variable to share the result across these two methods so in this method i will set the value in this method i will just get the value so how will i change my program i will say i don't want this declaration i'll simply say result is equal to this and that's it simply say void okay okay so now this is a result i have saved the result here i have multiplied it result is saved right how will i get it here i really don't have to do this again all i have to do is i will remove this so square 2 is called that's it end of story what's happening when this will execute it square method will be called it will come here the operation will be performed whatever is the result it will saved inside the result variable and then i am just accessing it directly here i don't have this method to return it because i am using a shared variable so whatever i declare at the top it becomes an instance variable and that is actually shared across it can be shared right so it, this variable is shared here as well as here so both of these methods can access it if you don't want a method to be shared sorry you don't want a variable to be shared then you really have to declare it inside sometimes there is a need that you really don't want it to be shared because any method can accidentally change the value which you don't want it to do right so in such cases you don't really don't make such variables instance variables you just make it you just modify you just declare it inside a specific method make use of it and that's it end of story it will automatically will be destroyed the moment the method is executed completely right so i have just showed you some variation in how you can write methods and how you can pass the arguments and how can you take you know get the return values out of it multiple ways one is it will actually return it second way it will share it will change the state of a shared variable and that shared variable will can can get access or you can can get access to it in multiple method different methods uh let me go back quickly to next example again the same thing here in this case we are doing a queue right nothing different almost the same thing uh let me go to maybe this one uh again i think i've copied same example is it yeah so let's take maybe this example here what i'm what i'm doing here in this case i'm just doing some some uh some logic basically so what here is uh, the example here is it's written at the top given two integers return true if some of them is 30 or one of them is 30 right so these kind of problem statements which you are going to get not exactly this in actual business environment actual actual project environment you going to get these kind of problem statement then you want to do this then do this and then do that so that english language which is which will be in that format is what you need to read understand and then you have to convert it in the code right this is exactly what a programmer needs to do need need, need to do so here it's simply given two integers you are given two integers you have to return true you have to return boolean true or false if some of them is 30 or one of them is 30 right so idea is if n1 is 30 then i will return a true if n2 is 30 then i will return a true or if the addition of n1 and n2 is 30 then also i will return a true right so this is how this english language gets converted to a code right so here we have three conditions right two integers so there are three conditions some of them is true or one of them is 30 so there are three conditions one condition is n1 is 30 as i discussed in the last class this means or so n1 is 30 or n2 is 30 or n1 plus n2 is 30 if either of them is true so this gives me true or true and true this will give me true if it is let me not do it here i'm just trying to explain how this or works in case you don't know what really this how this really uh, this this or works so let me just show you 
So if all the three conditions are true, it will give me true. Okay. Come on. Now, if any of all the conditions are false, it will give me false. So if all the conditions are false, only then it will give me false. So for example, I'll say, I will call the method as here it's they have, they have said 10 and 20, right? So in this case, it will give me true. Why? Because the 10 and one is 10. Is it equal to 30? No. So this will be a false. Uh, addition of this is 10 and 20 is 30, right? So this will give me true. First condition will be true. This will be true because N1 plus N2 is 30. So it will be true. N1 is 30. No, it will be false. N2 is 30. No, it will also be false. But this will give me in total total as true. So when it will be evaluated, it will be it will give me true because that's how or operation works. So if everything is true, it gives me true. If everything is false, it gives me false. But if at least one is true, either this or this or this, if at least one of them is true, then it will give me true. That's how or really works. So in this case, this first will give me what true. It will return me true because this condition got true here in the first first execution. Now when it, this will get executed, then it's saying 20, 20. So addition of 20, 20 is false. So this will be false. And ni neither of them is equal to 30. So everything will be false. So it will come here and my condition will be false. Right? So if you want to really understand what's happening, it's very simple to do. Try debug. When you try debug, you can put a breakpoint here and then you can say, see, uh, what is the value of N1, what is the value of N2 and what is the value of this and what is the value of this and rather I will just do it maybe. Uh, let me just do it quickly. I'm, I'm just emphasizing more on this debug part because that is really a savior for you guys to understand what's happening. Uh, let me just put it here, switch. So now, what I can do is to understand what's happening. I will just put one condition here. This is true. Then what is this? This is false. I'll copy this. What is this? This is also false. But if I just compare all of them, if I just copy for the full expression, it gives me a true. And this is what I was trying to explain you. Right? So true, false, false gives me true in the case of or. If it is an or. If it is an end, then it will be different. So let me just, because this way we can also cover the operations, how to combine the operations. Now this is called as end. It works almost in a, in a, in a quite opposite way of how or works. Let me just show you that quickly. Okay. Oh, okay. I did not. I should have debugged it. Uh, right. So if I now do this expression, because this time this is not or this is, so now you'll see it is false. Why? Because in the case of and it works just opposite means if there is even a one condition which is a false, the whole expression becomes false. So here, this is true, but all of them, this and this is false. So at least we got one false, even though we get one false, and in this case, we are getting two false, right? Even one condition is false, then the whole expression becomes false. Why I am saying, explaining this, because I'm assuming few of you are not from computer background. So if you're not from computer background, this might be difficult, right? If you are, then I think this, you, you studied this. Now I'll just go back. I'll stop the execution and I'll stop it. I'll go back to my original view. Uh, again, uh, simple example that the reason I have written these statements here is to give you a glimpse that this code was not present. I was having only this just by reading this statement, I was able to write the code and that is what you need to practice. So next assignment which I'm going to give you would be maybe few assignments will be in this format. 
that this is what you need to do. Just tell me how we are going to do that. And then you have to convert these statements into a well-defined code, right? So it's simply given two integers, return twice their sum. If both are same, otherwise return their sum. Okay. So it's a problem statement is that there are two numbers. I want to return the twice of their sum if they are equal. So if I'm saying two and two, right? That means two is equal to two. That means true. So then it, what will happen? Two plus two, four into two. So I want to double its sum. If not, if they are not equal, then just the sum, right? So there we have two statements. One is rather there are three. So there are different, different uh, values which is being written here. This is supposed to be maybe 50 or something, right? So in this case, it will just return the sum, but in this case, it will return the twice of the sum. Okay. Again, very basic, simple example. Guys, interrupt me in between if you didn't get whatever whatever you're seeing, you're not understanding it. Just just stop me and ask. Uh, I, I didn't understand that uh, convocation twice something. Yeah, so the thing is, this is a English statement. This is, you can also say problem statement. The problem statement is, if you have two numbers or two integers and you want to return the twice of the sum if they are equal. So hey, what he, what what's written here is return twice their sum uh, their sum if both are same. So there are two things. Let me just break it. Return either twice their sum if both are same. And second is otherwise return their sum. Right, so there are two conditions basically. One is if the two numbers are same, if twice the sum, if both are same, if the numbers are same, then return the twice of their sum. So this is what I'm done here. So this is your condition, both are same. This is what I've done here. If this is true, then twice their sum, then return two times of their sum. So I'm first adding these A and B, which is being coming or being passed here. And then I'm just multiplying it with two because I want to return twice their sum. If not, if A is not equal to B, then I will just simply otherwise return their sum. So I will just add them and return it. Fine. Oh, no, actually my query was different. Uh, you defined a, a twice, uh, you mentioned their twice sum in main method. So what is that uh, twice sum? This is the name of the method. So this is the method, right? So this is the name of the method, twice sum. I can say, X, Y, Z here. So I have to call X, Y, Z here. So I have to call the method, isn't it? This is the method I have written. And I have to call this method in my main method. That only then it will get executed. Oh, I didn't see. Sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. No. Actually, uh, I, th I think your yeah, confusion was that I have used this inside a system print LN only. Right, so uh, see, you can could have done it this way also. So best way to do it is like this: int a, and I'll simply cut it from here and write this. It's always good to break the statements. Uh, people who are good in Java, they try to merge these statements too, so that their code looks smaller. But uh, it's not a good idea because the people who are reading your code will might, might find it difficult to read. So I can do this. So now it's more evident that first I'm calling these methods twice sum, twice sum again and again using different arguments 10, 20, 20, 40, 10, 30. And based on that, uh, the information which is being processed inside this method is going to get saved here in the these variables because I'm returning and then it's going to be displayed here. Okay. Uh, all right. Then maybe the next example. Uh, again, the same thing, similar example, a uh, little bit different. Uh, uh, you can say in some sense, a more business oriented, uh, wherein there are two monkeys. If both the monkeys are smiling, then we are in trouble. If both the monkeys are not smiling, then also we are in trouble. Return true if we are in trouble. Right? So there are two monkeys. So I'll say A and B. Okay, smiling, then I'll say 
a is equal to true not smiling i'll say uh, it's false right so by this example what i'm trying to explain here is that your problem statement can be complex but you need to decide how can you apply this in the code so here by just let's say if i hide this if i just let's say hide this just reading this you might not get a good idea on what kind of variable integer boolean what should i do right but this is what you need to practice so here simply i am saying if both the monkeys are smiling then we are in trouble both the monkeys are not smiling then also we are in trouble return true if we are in trouble right so then i can kind of assume few things i'll say okay i'll i'll say if monkey is smiling so their monkey can have only two states either either it's smiling or it's not smiling so since there there are only two states the best uh data structure or the best uh variable type i could use here is boolean because one or zero so it can only have two ways two things either smiling not smiling that's the reason i've used boolean here right so boolean true means smiling boolean false not smiling so whatever is here in the problem statement is how i am i have converted it in the code so if a and b both are smiling then return true if both are not smiling then also it's fine right but if one of them is smiling one of them not smiling then return false right so try to go through this uh, again it's not complex to understand if if you just go through line by line line by line what really is happening what will return so again a debug will help here you can just simply debug it and see how it's going with true true false false true false false true based on that you will see and you really don't really have to have uh, uh, an eclipse with you to understand this you can just simply write it down you can see and you can trace it okay true true so it will first go here true true so that means both of them is correct so it will return a true okay then false false where it will lie false false it will give you this right so based on this then then real challenge will come when you want to understand true and false because i have just told you how and works right so based on that you can really understand what will happen when you say true and false so i'll leave this up to you to trace which block this will go into which block this and which block this would go into so i'll leave up to you to trace it again not a very complicated example uh this we already discussed uh again square we discussed again nothing different here i'm just returning an integer that's it and yeah so here only difference is the type of variable which you are going to return so here in this case in the previous cases we have been returning integer most of the time but it is not restricted to return the integer only you can return any data type from here so even if i am creating a method called as public void let's say for now temp and if i want to say i want to return i want to say int a is equal to 9 then i will say return a so i have to change this to integer but if i want to say i want to return a string i will say i want to return a string then this return type has to change to return so return type of the variable which you wish to return so in this case it's a string so i have to change this to string okay same way if you want to return a double double is which what holds the decimal values double and floats are the two types which returns uh your your decimal value stores your decimal values so if you want to return a double then you have to say okay i want to return a double so i'll say double 90.5 i'll say i want to return double then it will give you an error because it will say this is not a right return type so i'll say change have it changed to double last example if i want to even return an object so i'll say i want to return an array list arr list new array list and if i want to return an array list then i have to change that type of it so i have to say i will return array list like this 
So irrespective of what you want to return or rather I should not say irrespective, whatever you wish to return, you have to mention it here. If you want to return an integer, you mention an integer. If you want to return a string, you have to mention a string. Double, so double. If you want to return an object, then you return the object of it. Okay, I hope this is this is clear. All right. Now, one or rather two more very important concepts in 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 when it comes to the methods. Uh, one is called as overloading, and it's called as overriding. Overriding we did see previously, but as I said, I'm going to talk about it again. Uh, and overriding mostly deals with the, the inheritance concept, which we actually have discovered discussed quite a lot. Uh, but not today. We'll not discuss it today. We're going to discuss it maybe when we again try to cover the inheritance topic. But overloading is at least what we can see. And there is one more very important type of method called as constructor. So both of uh, both of these things, which is what is our last topic of the day. Let me just start with it. So I will just simply create another class. Construct overloading. So this is my method. Sorry, this is my class. What I'll do is I will go and create a method here. Public void addition. Now this addition takes two variables int a, int b, and this accepts this does the operation c is equal to a plus b and it returns it returns what it returns c so i'm happy with my method because i have to first change i'm happy with the method because it just adds the numbers and returns the result but what if i want to now add three numbers so i need to enhance this behavior but i don't want to change the name of the method because I don't want to confuse my user. The user, if he wants to add numbers, he should always be calling the addition method and not the addition one number, addition two numbers, or addition two number, addition three number, addition phone number. I want him to call always a single method called as addition, but then he can pass different arguments, right? Now to achieve this, what we can do in Java is, something called as object overloading that means i can have two methods by the same name if i modify their arguments or number of arguments or type of arguments so if i say int c then i'm good to go Okay, so if I do this, then there will not be any error in my code. This is called as object overloading, which is the method name is same, but the argument number of arguments are different. Right, this is example of object overloading. How, how it really works is, so if I go and create, or maybe I'll just make use of existing one. So let's say this is, this is my public static void main, and I want to call the addition method, right? So depending on, so I am the user right now, I'm using it. So what, how I, I will use it, I will first create the object of this method called as constructor overloading object is equal to new. I really have to copy it's a big name. I'll simply say this new this, that's it. And well as when I say object dot, when I say object dot, You'll see I have it's it's showing me two methods. It's of the same name, addition and addition, but now it is showing me either you'll have an option to add two numbers, or you can also have an option to add three numbers. So this addition method is actually overloaded. That means I can make I mean I can call the same name method by the same name, but I can choose to pass on different arguments so as to decide at so as to decide actually this is this is the compile time only. So so as to decide which method is going to get triggered based on number of arguments i'm passing so if i'm passing this i'll say four five that means i'm passing three arguments here isn't it so if i'm passing three arguments i'll say i result 
And if I want to print this, I will simply say result. And when I run this, this method is going to get executed. Okay. And if I am going to say, if I'm going to say, okay, uh, now call the same method, but with one less argument. So in this case, the, this method is going to get executed. So at this, the compiler of Java actually, uh, kind of identifies, even if the name of the method is same, it identifies that or it differentiates between these two methods based on the number of arguments which you have passed. And not only the number of argument, you can also overload a method based on the type of arguments. Okay, so if I say this, it will give me an error, but if I change this to a string, then there will not be any error. Of course, there will be error because the string cannot be added to an integer. Uh, so this is the internal implementation error, but other error of having duplicate method name, there will not be any error, right? So overloading is possible on these two things, number of arguments, as well as the type of arguments. Okay. So this is simple concept of overloading. It has many, many utilities. Uh, when you go and go, when you go and, you know, try with using Selenium, you will see so many overloaded methods. So that means the name of the method is same, but the based on the argument, different type of arguments, it, it will behave differently. So you can, you have a method, for example, any method, it, it's taking an object or it's taking a set of objects or it's taking different number of objects or, or, or arguments based on that, uh, it will get executed. Name of the method will still remain the same. Okay. So any, anyone here who has worked on Selenium can, can give, can you give me an example if, if you have seen anything of this sort in Selenium library or Selenium jar file? Okay, never mind. So idea is you're going to see a lot of overloaded methods and you might also have to create a lot of overloaded methods when you actually do it. So it's bad practice to do addition of two numbers, addition of three numbers. This is not a right way to do. The concept of addition is still the addition. You should not name or should not confuse. When you, if you kind of try to change the name of it, it might confuse the user. Who is the user? The user is who is using your method. So this main method is your user of your class. So when you design your class, you should design it in such a manner so that it becomes easy for anyone who is using your class. It becomes easy for it to identify what kind of behaviors you have and, and the name of the behavior, of course, right? So it really deal really, really is important that you give a sensible name of to the behavior as well as you overload it. You don't unnecessarily modify the name of the behavior just for the sake of uh, you know different operations so here in this case in this case i am adding three numbers actually i should be adding three numbers here so the behavior is changed here the implementation part has changed not the name so name still remains the same and this gives flexibility and understandability to the user to call the addition and just change the arguments here based on the arguments being changed uh, it becomes easy and when we use selenium we actually becomes the user so when we use selenium jar file, we have different, we need to do certain behavior, we need to trigger certain behavior, but every time maybe based on the number of arguments or based on the type of the arguments, we need to behave it differently. So, but we will still always call the same method name and we'll just make the changes in the argument types, number of argument or argument, uh, uh, you know, argument type or number of argument based on whatever is available in the selenium jar. So this gives us as a Selenium user, this gives us, gives us ease of use or it gives us better understanding on what we really want to call and how we want to call it. And anyway, when you call it in the user part here, it, it actually shows you, right? Can you say a dot? It tells you. So Java has this intelligence, intelligence, which tells you which method to call, which method you want to call. So here, if you see, we have three methods, addition, addition, which straight takes string A and B and there's one more addition which takes A, B and C all three okay uh, any confusion here okay one one last thing okay one last thing is method overriding i'll just quickly explain it 
uh, if you are not getting it that's fine if you're not getting that means you haven't attended inheritance concept class uh, so anyway this is going to get repeated but since we are on methods i would really want to talk about it so how that inheritance concept overriding works i will not dig very deep inside it i'll just quickly make two classes parent class and i'll make a class and the class i'll say it's a child class and in the parent class i will say i will create a method public void parent method i am an parent then in the child class i will say i am extending this extends parent class so the idea of inheritance is if you have attended it if you don't if you haven't attended if you're not getting this forget about it don't worry we're going to repeat this but for the for the people who understand what inheritance is the idea is very simple when i said child class extends parent class this actually becomes part of child class right so when i create a object of child class i will have access to this method as well but in some cases you don't want it right so for example in child parent class you have multiple methods parent method 1 parent method 2 or i'll just simply say method 1 method 2 method 1 and method 2 okay and you have multiple methods present here but you don't want all of those methods you want only method 2 method 1 right so you want this method method 1 inside child class but you really don't want this behavior i mean you don't have an option of not having you definitely will get this because you have extended this but somehow you are not happy with the implementation you want to have your own implementation in such cases you actually override the parent method in the child method how it's very simple straight forward you just make the same signature inside the child class so all you have to do is to make the same signature as soon as you do this you will automatically get automatically get a symbol this automatically overrides so you don't have to mention a annotation called as override this annotation is just used so that it it makes sure you're just telling that i am definitely overriding something right and if you're not overriding something then it will give you an error that i am not overriding anything so you really don't have to put override method to override override annotation to override it it will as soon as you create the same declaration here the same signature here it will override your method so if i say i am in child i have i i am an over written method right so the concept which i would like to tell is i will just simply go here and now instead of this i'll simply say child class object is equal to new child class and i will say object dot method 1 object dot method 2 okay and what if i have not yet overridden it so i don't want to override it for example so right now it's not overridden so if i now call this run as java application it will print i am in parent method 1 i am in print parent method 2 method 2 so so even if i have created the child class object in child class if you see i have no method so how these methods are being triggered because they are in parent class and the concept of inheritance is whatever is in the parent class will come to the child class jo mera hai wo tera right that's how inheritance works whatever uh, your father owns will get transferred to you automatically right so whatever method we have in parent class they now is has become part of child class and if i just create a object of child class even though the child class has no methods still i am able to call them and these are being triggered from the parent class but sometimes you don't want it sometimes there is a bad method in present inside parent class or you just not happy with the implementation of the method present inside the parent class if you don't want it 
then you can override it. You can say when next time, so since you have this method here, so next time when method two is called, it will not call the parent class method. It will call the child class method. So this is how I have overridden the method present inside the parent class. So now if I just run it, so for the method one, it has triggered the parent method, but for the method two, since the method two was overridden, so it has called method two, this one, which is overridden. method. Okay. Uh, any questions so far? No. Okay. So yeah, so this is what uh, I want to talk about method. This is basically all about method, which you're going to see. Of course, there are a lot to it. Uh, there are of course, a lot of co other concepts, but we are working on our fundamentals for now. Right. So these are, this is the fundamental. This is enough to understand how a Selenium code works or how, how a API automation framework works. Uh, this is enough. Okay. So what I want from you guys is to practice it. Uh, I will be sending an assignment. Uh, and that assignment will be uh, will not be a will not be a very granular level. It will be a simple assignment wherein you have to create a class object methods where you might have to apply some for loops or if loops. So it will be more like a problem statement to do something. Again, not very complicated. Uh, it will not be very complicated so that you just can't work at all. Uh, but still, it will give you something. And I am not really interested interested in that you complete the assignment. I am interested in, in your attempt. Okay. So even if you are not, not able to complete it, whatever you have done, you can just publish it in the box. I, I assume everyone has now logged into box. Everyone has signed up into the box. So that's where we are keeping the assignment for now. Um, moving forward, we would have another portal where we are going to track all of this. Uh, but for now, box is our place where you have to submit. Uh, and as I discussed uh, yesterday, uh, you really have, don't have to worry if you don't have Eclipse. Try it on in, in, in the copy. That's the old way, you know. That's how we used to uh, do it in, in, in the college days sometimes. We used to write uh, the code in the, in the copy and that's how we used to trace it. We used to draw tables, right? Looping, we used to do, uh, we used to create tables and metrics. We used to say, okay, this is I, this is J. First iteration, value of what is value of I, what is value of J. And then what is the value of expression and all those, this is how you used to track it. This is also a good practice for logic building. See logic has to be built in your head. You don't really need a eclipse to build the logic in your head. Logic building can happen in your head and all you need is a copy and pen that also is sufficient to build the logic. And we really need to work on a logic building. Uh, what I'm telling you is just when I say this is public, this is uh, access modifier, this is uh, how you return it is the name of the method. These, these are just, uh, I uh, know syntaxes, syntaxes of Java, how you're going to write it. But syntax is not logic. For logic, you don't really have to worry about syntax because logic can be written in pseudocode, algorithmic way. You can write an algorithm and an algorithm, you really don't have to worry about syntaxes. All you write is a pseudocode. So we need to work on logic. If you are good at logic, the language is not a barrier. So really you, are, you don't, you should not be focusing on learning each and every aspect of how Java works and what is the, what is the syntax of Java, how you can do this Java in, in uh, you know, different ways. The purpose is not that the purpose is you need to build the logic, right? Logic was something which I was trying to explain with the monkey example. So this was the problem statement. Now, how you can convert this into a code, this requires logic building. Right. So that logic building is, is what is required. And this, that can only come when you challenge yourself with new assignments, try to, uh, understand what is the assignment and try to convert that into code. Even if you don't have Eclipse, you don't have to write the code. You, all you can do is write the algorithm pseudo code. Pseudo code is, is very simple. All you have to do is if else, if this is the condition, this is something, then do this. Do something else, do something. This is pseudocode. If you're not sure what pseudocode is, I'll send you a link how to write a pseudocode algorithmic way. Uh, but there really no syntaxes are required. Okay. But if you are comfortable with using the syntaxes, I'm happy with it. No problem. If you have Eclipse, then you definitely have to do it in Eclipse. 
But if you don't have an Eclipse, you're using mobile or some, some different issues, technical issues you have, then it doesn't really doesn't harm in doing it in, or rather it's a beneficial to do it in a pay, in, in pen and copy, right? When you do it, you don't have to complete it. As I said, don't have to complete it. Just attempt it. Attempt, try to put some mind. If I'm giving an assignment, you try at least one or two hours or three hours and working on it. Not in a single go, then you can try it, you know, uh, working or you space it based on your availability. I don't mind, but uh, please try to work on the assignment. As I said, if you don't do it, you will start feeling left behind. You will, you will, there will be a huge backlog after a week or two weeks and then you will lose interest. And we really, both of us, we don't want that situation to happen. Okay. So please now, I think our next class is on Tuesday. On Tuesday, I'm going to talk more about classes and objects, a few more advanced stuff in classes and objects, perhaps, or maybe uh, some, some more string manipulation. So I'll, I'll check my, my schedule based on that. I'll pass it on as well before, beforehand. So whatever you're going to do on Tuesday, uh, it's going to be something advanced. So when I say advanced, that means this prior knowledge or prior lo you know, logic building is required to complete the next set of assignments, right? So I'm emphasizing and I'm, I'm really uh, hopeful that you guys really would do it. Okay. If you have any issues not working, you're, you're struggling with it. You po immediately post in the group. You have to be very interactive. You have to immediately say, this is not working. Please let me know what to do next. Whatever it is, if, if it is a small, simple, small, basic thing also, and don't mind, you have to come forward and say that I'm not able to solve this. And please try to publish it in the group so that I, as well as Saran and whoever it is, we will, will get to see what's and who help will come faster. If you just, uh, sometimes people you do, you, you ask individually, uh, sometimes if individual is, is busy, maybe you will not be able to answer it quickly. But if you post in the group, it will be helpful for you. You will get faster response as well as, uh, other people also will also get to know from your mistakes and they will also kind of get motivated to not to repeat those mistakes. Okay, so again, I will emphasize use group to publish your issues. And most probably few in few days, few weeks, uh, there will be a portal which we're going to use for all, all of these activities. Okay, guys, uh, uh, anything else? So I'll publish the recording as well as uh, uh, the assignment shortly, maybe in the next two, three hours. All right, any, anything else, guys? Else we'll call it a wrap. No. Okay, I see you. See you on Tuesday. I'll publish the agenda of Tuesday beforehand. Okay. Okay. All okay. right. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, sir.